since 2016, the museum is in a new location. We're actually on the campus of Eastern New Mexico University. Because of the pandemic, we are currently closed to the public, but we want to have everybody to have a chance to actually see a little bit about what we're doing here. And we are called the Blackwater Draw Museum for a specific reason. And that's tied directly to the Blackwater Draw National Historic Landmark, which is about six or seven miles north of Fort Talos. And this is a significant archaeological site. Uh, it's one of the most important archaeological sites in all of North America because of these spear points that you see in this case here. And these are today what we refer to as Clovis Chipstone Spear Points after the nearby town of Clovis, just north of Fort Talos. And these were first discovered here at Blackwater Draw in 1932. And this was the first time anywhere in the New World, anywhere in North America, that we see direct evidence of human-made artifacts with mammoth bones. So this was a critical uh, stage in American archaeology that caused a dramatic rethinking of when people actually entered into the New World. Because now all of a sudden we have humans existing at the same time as mammoths. And the archaeological site, I will be providing a virtual tour of that as well uh, later this year, probably in October. So we'll keep you guys posted uh, so that you can see the archaeological site virtually. At the same time that Clovis folks were roaming around this area, we also had creatures like this on the landscape. This is a saber-toothed cat. Uh, it's a little bit larger than life size, but not too much larger. Uh, it's not uncommon that the sabers, the front teeth on these guys would be over nine inches long, so they were a pretty intimidating uh, animal that was out on the landscape at the same time that Clovis people were here over 13,000 years ago. During what we refer to as the Pleistocene period or the end of the last ice age. So I'm going to walk you around. I'm not going to show you everything because we still want you to have a chance to actually come and experience the museum in person. This is a fun display of chip stone spear points and a variety of other tools that were all found here uh, basically in Roosevelt County and the surrounding counties of eastern New Mexico and west Texas. And the reason that this case is fun is that we actually do a little game with people when they visit. You have to guess how many artifacts are in there. And honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> I need to count myself. But if you can get the right number, or within a handful of the right number, we'll actually give you a free piece of merchandise from Blackwater Girl. And a lot of our displays are constantly uh, being rotated and changing. We like to keep the museum fresh uh, for our repeat visitors. We get a lot of school groups that come through, and each year they like to see something new. So we do try to keep things uh, new and exciting. And what's really exciting for kids when they visit, we can actually come to the museum and touch real mammoth bones. And there's not a lot of places you can actually do that. Uh, typically these will be behind glass, so you can't actually get up and actually touch the specimens. And this shows you on this display here the difference between a mastodon tooth and a mammoth tooth on the right. And you'll notice that the mastodon it's ridged or cusped. It's very similar to our molars, our human molars. And this tooth is designed for actually crunching. And the reason that is, ma uh, mastodon were mostly woodland creatures. So they were eating twigs and leaves and branches. Whereas mammoth, their teeth are more of a washboard. And this is for grinding. And the reason for that is that mammoth actually lived in grasslands primarily. And their primary food was grass. So this tooth is better suited for actually grinding grass, whereas this one's better for eating trees. So we'll move around the corner. We have a baby camel. Uh, camels did live in North America at the same time as the Clovis people when they were here. And two summers ago, 2019, out of Blackwater Grove, we began the excavation of the partial camel skeleton that's eroding out. Uh, we didn't get as far as we hoped. We ran out of time, which often happens in archaeology, but we know that it's there and we're hopeful to get back in the near future and continue uh, excavation on that camel. We'll come around the corner and this is 
is our display on bison. Bison are interesting because they're one of the large mammals that actually does not go extinct at the end of the last ice age at the terminal Pleistocene. We have the mastodon, the mammoth, the camel, uh, the American horse, saber-toothed cat, giant ground sloth, all these other large animals that go extinct at this time, but bison don't. And simply what happens is they tend to get smaller through time. And what you can see on the wall back behind us is a series of bison skulls. Another thing that tends to happen through time is the shape of their horns changes. And you'll notice on this particular specimen, the horns are actually pretty straight. So this is an older uh, extinct form of bison compared to the modern bison that we see in the middle up there where the horns actually curl up towards the top. So the center display has a variety of bones, and these are all real bones, uh, actually from Blackwater Draw. So we have uh, mammoth bones. This is the upper arm of a mammoth, so the humerus and the ulna. Uh, we have a bison skull, which is interesting because you'll notice it looks like it's squashed. It's very flat. And the reason for that is that it's over 10,000 years old and it was buried by several meters of sediment. So it's had a lot of weight sitting on it for at least 10,000 years and that tends to squash uh, some of these remains at the archeological site. So this is uh, real authentic material from the site but in a, a mock setting, uh, similar to what you would actually see when you go out to visit Blackwater Draw. This was a fun uh, art project, and there's actually two different panels of these displays in the museum that used a variety of artifacts from what we refer to as the Miles Collection, which is a major uh, anthropological collection that we have here at Eastern New Mexico University. And it was really a chance to uh, display our artifacts, but in a, an artistic way. So we have a little bit of everything for all interests. Uh, we have the archaeological side in the museum, but we also have uh, the artistic side for people that are interested in photography. And for the little ones, we have a play corner where they can come in and play with uh, puzzles, they can look at books. Um, we have a sandbox here that actually has artifacts in it that they can dig around in and pretend like they are an archaeologist out in the field. So a lot of kids will come in and this is the first place they go to. They come to this corner and they'll spend a long time in this corner. It's often their favorite place. And one of the activities they can do is actually grind corn. So this is uh, what we refer to as a mortar and pestle or a mono and matate. It's just, uh, the concept is simple. It's simply taking one stone and grinding on another and the reason you do that is you want to create flour. Uh, so think about if you're wanting to make uh, anything you cook with today that has flour in it, this is the early form of how you create that, the early technology. So Blackwater Grohl uh, has a very interesting and dynamic past. It is over 13,000 years old for the earliest archeological evidence we see there. But another important part of the story is actually the historic activities that took place at the site. And beginning in the 1950s, the site became a commercial gravel mine. So when you visit the site today, you'll notice you drop into a big hole in the ground, a big pit. And that lasted all the way through the 70s. So not surprisingly, we have a lot of what today we'd refer to as trash. But to an archeologist, this is actually treasure. It tells us about uh, the historic activities that took place at Blackwater Draw. It was uh, a playground for a number of years, for lack of a better word, where people would go out and target practice, uh, shoot their guns. And what you can see maybe is kind of a weird, kind of amber-colored blob of material on the center uh, pedestal there. That's actually a bowling ball. So somebody went out there probably in the 70s or 80s and shot a bowling ball, which is kind of fun. It's all part of the history of the site. And this is more of the same in this case, 
uh, more so directly related to the gravel mining. So we have a variety of uh, oil cans and filters and pieces related to the heavy machinery. But you can also see uh, some of the evidence of extensive target practice activities taking place in that barrel that's been heavily shot up. So I should mention uh, the building we're in, it's in my opinion one of the more impressive buildings on the campus at Eastern New Mexico University. And it has its own unique past. In the 1940s, it was actually the dining hall for the faculty and the staff. So we have a fun picture here of individuals in the 1940s actually in this same room. So if you look up, you can see the same rafters uh, that you see depicted in this image. And since 2016, we have reconverted this space into the new Gladwater Girl Museum. So we'll come around the corner here, and in these cases, along the walls here, and back behind us, there's a whole variety of cases. These are all artifacts from the Miles Anthropological Collection that I mentioned earlier, and really some incredible stuff, Native American, um, beadwork, leatherwork, and a variety of other artifacts that are in pristine condition, just very well preserved, and just incredibly gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. So you can look at the detail on some of these, and there's literally thousands of beads on a single piece, and those are all strung on there by hand. So you can imagine the amount of time that went into building a simple uh, young boy's vest like this. The Southwest is famous for pottery, for ceramics, and we have a variety of different styles of ceramics through time, uh, in this case, and as well as in a couple other cases we'll walk by. And up above, it's kind of hard to see where we're standing, but we have some of the larger pots, so um, it gives you an idea of just how massive some of these ceramic vessels actually were. If I had to pick out one artifact, that I like the best out of this whole museum. Uh, I am a Clovis guy, so obviously I like the Clovis uh, spear points, but this saddle is special in history because it belonged to an individual by the name of George McJunkin, who actually discovered the Folsom Archaeological Site back in 1908. So well before Blackwater Draw was ever on the map, uh, there was another significant archaeological site discovered in Northeast New Mexico that provided scientists and archeologists at the time, uh, similar to Blackwater Draw a few years later, uh, the understanding that, yeah, humans actually had lived here for at least 10,000 years. So George McJunkin discovered the Folsom site and we actually have an image, it's kind of hard to see through the glass, but you can see him actually sitting on his horse on the same saddle that we now have in our museum. So for me, that's a, a special artifact directly tied to the history of one of the most significant archeological discoveries in all of North America. We do have a mascot, <laughs> and we will occasionally get students to wear this uh, for some of our public events. They really enjoy wearing it when it's 100 degrees and we're doing something in the summer. It's not the most friendly outfit to wear, but uh, they usually don't complain too much about it. Again, you can see more ceramics, uh, all from the Miles Anthropological Collection. Some of these are just absolutely incredible designs, uh, painted in different colors and textures. And in addition to the ceramics, we actually have basketry, so uh, fiber crafts, actually crafting uh, materials out of yucca, for example. Some of these are made out of yucca and a variety of other plants to make baskets and uh, pots and various other vessels for uh, storing, uh, storing materials as well as actually serving. You think about a dinner platter today, that can serve uh, the same function. So once again, this is more of the Miles collection. Uh, we have more beadwork, as you can see, but also a variety of uh, pendants and shells, um, necklaces that are made out of a variety of different um, marine shells. So the collection itself is pretty extensive and it encompasses a lot of different cultural material. 
a lot of different types of artifacts. Some of my favorite are these little tiny pots. So we have the great big ones back up on the wall, but we also have these little tiny ones on display as well. So we're coming around full circle. Uh, this is in our display or our visit today, this is the last Miles display, but when you come in, it's actually the first. And it's more of your classic ceramics from the American Southwest. And one thing that I do want to point out is that we have a variety of fun merchandise. So when you guys come to visit, you can pick out your own um, custom Blackwater Draw water bottles, as well as different t-shirt designs that we have. Uh, one of the top sellers for us since we do have a saber tooth cat on display, is the little baby saber tooth cat. So we look forward to having you guys come visit whenever that is. Um, the best we can guess is sometime in the spring. We're hopeful that we'll be able to reopen back up. So thanks for tuning in.